In this video, we're going to see how to make a contrast between two opposing um, ideas or two opposing parts of a sentence. If you scan the code, you'll be able to access the original blog post where this video um, can be found together with some other materials which can help you as well. So what we're going to be describing here is basically um, the situations where you have two opposing ideas. Apparently, money is supposed to give you happiness, but in this case, it doesn't. So this person, you would say, he is very rich, but he isn't happy. That sentence is correct, it's fine. However, it is too simple. So you must be able to, to say things in a more complicated uh, in a more sophisticated way. So you can do that, for example, by means of a subordinate clause. So you could say, instead of he is rich but, you could say, although he is very rich, he isn't happy. And what you do, basically, you use although, which is a link that needs a subject and a verb after it. And in the sentence with although, what you say, or what you express, is the obstacle. And in the main clause, what you say is the result. You could also say, in spite of or despite his money. So what you're doing here, you're somehow summarizing the idea of he is very rich into a noun group. So you could say in spite of his money or despite his money and this could be the result. He isn't rich. So let's see how you do all of these things and let's see some more examples. This was a situation. Uh, this girl here, let's call her Maria, she, she was late. Uh, she got up really late. So, she was late for school. It might have been a problem because she had an exam, but apparently it wasn't because she could take the exam. So, you could say, although she was late for school, that's the problem, however, Maria could take the exam. Or you can swap the order, you can change the order. Maria could take the exam, although she was late for school. So, this could be the result and this could be the obstacle. As I said, you can say the obstacle and then the result or the other way around. It doesn't really matter. You could say, although she was late for school, Maria could take the exam. And if you want, you could add at the end of a sentence, only if it's at the end, Maria could take the exam anyway. Another possibility, instead of saying although, you could replace it with the word, with the link even though. Even though she was late for school, it's exactly the same. Although she was late for school, even though she was late for school, and this could be the result, Maria could take the exam. And in an informal way, probably not in writing, but in speaking, you could say, Maria was late for school, she could take the exam though, and simply adding this though word at the end of your sentence, at the end of the result sentence. But as I say, this is a bit informal. So, you use the word although or even though they mean exactly the same, then a subject and then a verb in the present, past, future, whatever. So you can say things such as, although it snowed heavily, he came to the meeting, as we were saying, this is the problem and this is the result. You could say, even though he is very talented, it's the result, he isn't very successful. 
You could even say though, in the same way as you would say although or even though. Though he's very talented, he isn't successful. So you could add though to this list. And in a very informal way, you could say he is very talented, but he isn't successful though. Or forget about this. He is very talented, he isn't successful though. This is much more frequent, but as I said, this is informal. We're going to see now how to use the prepositions in spite of or despite. Because these words are prepositions, after these prepositions, you can only use a verb in the ing without a subject, only the verb, or a noun group. For example, you could say things such as in spite of living here or in spite of the weather. If you want to use despite, you could say despite living here or despite the weather. So these are basically the, the only two options you have after despite or in spite of. A verb in the ing, no subject, only the verb, or a noun group. Sometimes, if you really, really want to use it, or you need to use it, and you need to use a subject and a verb, what you might do is to use the expression in spite of the fact that, and then you can use a subject and a verb because you're using that. And you can have a proper subordinate clause here. So you could say, despite the fact that it is raining, or in spite of the fact that it is raining, and then whatever. This is grammatically correct, and maybe uh, if you have to do some keyword transformations or rephrasing exercises or whatever, you might have to do this transformation. So if you if you have to do it, go ahead. If you can choose, I mean, for your own productions, for your own writing, I wouldn't advise it because you can use although, uh, even though you have other words. Okay, but you should know how to do this in case you need to use it as a transformation exercise. Let me give you some more examples of how you use in spite of or despite. You could say, for example, it is raining, that is a problem, yet we'll go on a trip. This is a very nice word as well, yet. This is another, wo another way of um, making the contrast between these two sentences. So you could say, in spite of the rain, we'll go on a trip. And as you can see here, you have just a noun group. Or, despite the rain, we'll go on a trip. Another possibility, Sarah plays the piano, however, she has never played it for me. This is the situation and this is the contrasting result, the surprising result in this case. Because Sarah is the one playing the piano and Sarah is the person who has never played it for me, because it is the same subject in both sentences, then you can use in spite of or despite and then a verb in the ing. Because you can understand, even if you don't mention any subject here, because you can't, but you understand that it's the same person. So you could say, in spite of playing the piano, Sarah has never played it for me. Or, despite playing the piano, Sarah has never played it for me. If you used a different subject, because, or if you had a different subject in both sentences, because you couldn't express it here, it would create a misunderstanding, because people could assume 
that it was the person you're using here. So you can only use in spite of or despite and the verb in the ing if the subject is the same in both sentences. One more example of what I mean. In this example here, we have this teenage boy here, David. David was angry, but David went to the party. So because it is the same subject, you could say, despite being angry, David went to the party. You could have said, in spite of being angry, David went to the party. If you can, sometimes you can somehow summarize um, what's happening with a noun. So in this case, because you're talking about feelings, you could summarize this with just a noun. And you could say, despite his anger, David went to the party. Or, in spite of his anger, David went to the party. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. In this case, you can. In this example here, you're going to see we have a different subject in both sentences. This is somehow the problem. Rugby is very violent. And this is the contrasting result. Many people in the UK play it. So, so if you really, really, really need to use the expression in spite of or despite, you could say, despite the fact that rugby is very violent, or in spite of the fact that rugby is very violent, and then the result is the same. Many people in the UK play it. As I said, I would suggest using this structure only if you have to use this. Otherwise, it sounds too formal and too um, bookish, probably. Because you have a more natural option by saying, although rugby is very violent, many people in the UK play it. And this is perhaps more natural. But you need to know how to make this transformation. You can also express this contrast um, by means of adverbs, such as however or nevertheless. If you remember the example before, this uh, boy called David, you could say David was angry, that is the problem, however he went to the party, that is the, the result, surprising result. And what we've used here, we have just the first sentence and we stop and after this stop we start a new sentence by using this adverb however and then a comma. However is actually um, very useful and it sounds very nice and as I say it tends to appear after a stop at the beginning of a new sentence and typically you say however and then a comma. You can also use it after a semicolon, which is a kind of strong pause as well. And you could say, for example, he has lots of experience, however, comma, he didn't get the job. Or, many people are concerned about global warming, that is a problem. However, comma, governments seem to be doing nothing. You have a synonym of however, which is the word nevertheless, and you use it exactly in the same way. It's 100%. Um, it's a synonym, 100%. However is more frequent. Nevertheless is a bit more cultured, perhaps. But anyway, you can use it exactly in the same way. And you might talk about a TV show such as uh, Salvame. That would be the obstacle. You would say, Salvame is a terrible show. Nevertheless many people watch it and as I said you use it after a strong pause and you use a comma after it. One final possibility, a very similar one actually, you could talk about another TV show Big Brother and you could say Big Brother has been on TV for years and yet 
many people still follow it. As you can see, we could have said, however, nevertheless, and yet. Maybe you use this when you want to emphasize how surprising it might be. Maybe that it has a, a sort of a more surprising element to it than however or nevertheless. Finally, if you, what you want to do is to compare two elements or two aspects or two factors, two things anyway, you could use the links whereas or while. For example, if you're going to compare prices last year and prices this year, you could say, you could say whereas prices rose last year, this year they've gone down. So as you can see, you have two proper sentences with subject and verb, but you start with whereas prices rose last year, this year they've gone down. Or if you're comparing two films, you could say while or whereas. But probably here, while is a bit better. While Knives Out is a better film, Avengers Endgame made more money at the box office. While this is a better film, Avengers made more money. So these are expressions you can use to, as I say, to express comparison and contrast between two elements.